Hey there once again, YouTube. Now this video, real quick, is for one of my subscribers, Jeremy. Jeremy, hope you're watching this right now because I made this for you because he was asking me, and pretty much this is for anybody. Really, this is for anybody who wants to learn how to do this. Um, but Jeremy, you wanted to know how to learn how to download seismic audio and how to live stream spectrogram or seismogram plots in the seismic program Swarm. Well, I'm going to teach you how to do that right now. First off, I'm, we have to use an example for the seismic audio, right? So let's use this example. Now remember, you got to know the uh, the channel codes. Excuse me. For this, WY is the network code, YLT is the station code, short period vertical, which is EHC, is the channel code, zero one is the location code. This video is a little bit more advanced, so I would hope that you would already know how to do this stuff before going to this video. Jeremy, I'm pretty sure you already do because you've been downloading seismic data for a while now. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to go to the Iris Time Series URL Builder. Not the Data Select URL Builder, the Time Series URL Builder. And of course, a link to that will be provided in the description box below. This is what we're going to do, okay? So, uh-oh, there we go. Network code is WY, right? YLT is the station code, right? Because we're using this as, a, as an example. 01 is the location code, pretty much just like the data select URL builder. Enter the parameters the same, the four codes that you need to gather the data from the channel, and EHC. Now let's see what date was this. Let's see, this earthquake swarm started, this is the July 5th rapid fire swarm near West Thumb Lake, actually in the northern tip of West Thumb Lake. Very, very strong swarm um, for how close together the earthquakes were. Started at 5.45 UTC on July 5th. So let's go back, and we're going to listen to the whole earthquake swarm, okay? 2018-07-05T. Now remember, it's in UTC. Everything. Sh whenever you do seismic analysis or do whatever for seismic data, always do it in UTC, which is also GMT. So UTC, let's do 05. Let's do 35. It started at 5.45, but let's do 5.35 because the audio is kind of sped up just a little bit. Let's go forward to end time. When did this earthquake swarm end? At about 637. So let's say 640. So dash 07, dash 05, T 0640, 00. zero. Okay. That's the whole time frame of this rapid fire earthquake swarm, which I believe, let's see how many earthquakes. About 160 earthquakes in less than an hour at Yellowstone on July 5th, 2018. Yes, it was pretty crazy. Sometimes you can add a filter if you want. By the way, Jeremy, if you're watching this, if it is HHZ or BHZ, whenever it's a broadband channel, you can leave it the way it is if you want. But I suggest using a 0.8 hertz high pass filter, but I'm not going to check that because this is short period vertical, EHZ. So I'm not going to do that right now, but you can if you want to. Down here, so once you have those parameters entered and a possible filter if you want, you can go to plot. But we don't want plot. You want to go down and click audio. Notice how it says audio right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Notice how it says audio right here. Press audio. We got that. Now this will open up a little bit right here. Now press audio sample rate. Sometimes 16,000 is okay. Now I want to let you know, the bigger the sample rate, the faster the audio will be. For example, let's say just for... Just for an example, 16,000 audio sample gives you 20 seconds worth of audio. Let's just say that. But if you were to do 10,000 audio sample, it would be much larger. The audio range would be much more than 20 seconds. I don't know exactly how much more. I don't know how the math works out with that. But I'm just saying, And but the thing is, is if you want to make this smaller, because that is why whenever somebody sees seismic audio on my videos, they're like, why is it so sped up? Well, if you have it almost at the exact same time frame and you don't have it sped up at all and it's just normal, real time, it's going to be hard to hear. I don't know why it's like that. So I like to speed it up, and that's natural, of course, because apparently whenever doing seismic audio, you should pretty much speed it up. So what I usually do is I'm going to do 7,000. That is a good starting point. And sometimes when I download seismic audio, I mess around with this a lot to get it to, get it to sound just right. Because if it's too low, you're not really going to hear the events as well. But if it's too high, it's going to occur too fast. So you kind of have to get it kind of right in the middle. It doesn't take that long, though. And, only, and the file sizes, are they're not that big. They're not that big. So we did 7,000 audio sample rate, 
Just do that just for this example right now. Go up and double check to make sure all the parameters are correct. Yes, they are. We didn't need a filter, but you can filter it if you want. Make sure format is audio. And just for this example, do 7000 audio sample. Once that is done, click this link. Click the link, kind of like the Iris Data Select URL builder. Notice, and usually, I'm just saying right now, a download window will pop up. A download window should pop up. But for me, I already set the setting on there to automatically download without a download window. So, but for you, a download window will likely pop up. So we did that for this earthquake swarm. And that is how you download seismic audio. You can pretty much do that with anything within the Iris DMC network. Sadly, if you have to get your data from NCEDC or SCEDC or a foreign data center, it will not let you do seismic audio. But if you're able to gather data from Iris, then it will let you do seismic audio for any earthquake swarm, for any singular earthquake. But remember, the audio sample, the lower it gets, the kind of the harder it gets to hear, depending, all depending on the time frame, really. So it all depends on the parameters you set. But for a good starting point, I would go with 7,000 audio sample. Some people might go a little bit above, some people might go a little bit below, but that's pretty much it. So for the July 5th, 2018 earthquake swarm, let's check out the audio that I just downloaded. And here it is right here. Okay, so that was the seismic audio to the July 5th, 2018 earthquake swarm. Now, what we're going to do is, this is the second thing that Jeremy wanted to know how to do, was to stream spectrogram or seismogram plots, live stream them via the seismic program swarm. Now, I'm not going to teach you how to stream them through YouTube. I don't know how to do that, actually. But, but I'm pretty sure, Jeremy, what you wanted to know how to do is to actually live stream it through swarm. So notice up here, you do not have to open anything. That is not what we're going to do. Right here, you see this line of buttons. I don't know if you can see it very well. Notice this line of buttons. So click the first one that says new data source. Boom. Now it'll open up a box that looks like this. Go all the way to seed link server. Click down and click rtserve iris.washington.edu. I'm not going to do that because I already added this. That's why all the way over here it says Iris. Because I already did this a long, long time ago. And once you close the program and you've already added it, it'll stay added to the to the left until you delete it. But yeah, just for example, RT serve. Do not change port. Do not change port. Just change that. RT serve iris.washington.edu. Data source and name can be whatever you want. Goobaloo. It could be Goobaloo if you want, but I like to keep it professional and say Iris. Okay, now I'm going to click X, but down here you would normally click OK. But since I already added it, I can't add it a second time, so that's it. So once it's added on the left, the name will pop up that you selected. For this example, it was Iris. Double click it. Notice how it says opening. This will take a good two to five minutes to open. I'm not joking because there's a lot of data in there. There's a lot of different stations, so we'll be back in just a minute when this decides to open. Okay, so about three to four minutes have gone by. Finally, it opened. It takes a while. Just saying, do not do all. You can do that if you want, but as you can see here, there are lots and lots and lots. I'm talking about probably thousands of stations there, guys. So just go to networks. For this example, we're going to do OTLD, which I actually, you know what? Let's do PLAD in the HV network which is right on the summit of Mauna Loa in Hawaii. Here's HV. Remember, these are network codes. HV. Scroll all the way down. These are station codes. All the way down, PLAD. Now here is the channel. It can either open one channel, 
or many, many, many different channels. Now we have this right here. Select it once. Do not double click it. Just select it once and then go all the way down to the bottom and you'll see it says open to now. That's not what we want. That's not what we want. Now there are multiple different ways to do this. Now you can either do open real time wave, which, which is this button right here. Click it once. Let's scroll up. It'll open one individual stream. I don't know why it's not showing any data right now. It's not showing any data. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe PLAD is offline. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, so I do not know why it is not streaming any data. It should be right now. It doesn't make any... Let me check the data. Let's see... Yeah, it should be working. It should be working. Okay, so regardless of that, that is how you open it. You should see a stream right here, but for some reason it's not working. Now for the next example, for the monitor. Now that's just individual streams. I suggest not doing that. What I like to do, let's go to the WI network for Yellowstone, shall we? Some stations that I know, actually no. Nah. Let's do, where is it? PB. Did I seriously just skip past PB? Where is it? There it is, PB. Let's, for this example, I'm going to have to spread this out. But for this example, you are going to use this button down here that says wave to monitor. Notice that, wave to monitor. It's the third one to the right. To the right. Okay, let me zoom this out just a little bit. Now for this, I'm going to use borehole 208. Now this is what we do. Let's go to borehole 208, expand it to see the channels. Notice there are a lot of different channels for just that one station. Yeah. Apparently the PB network has a lot of different channels. Highlight it once, just once. Notice down here, wave to monitor. It looks like a computer screen monitor. Press it once. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There we go. Press it once. Now I'm going to expand this the whole way. And you're going to say, there's no wave data again here. I know that's not a glitch. Actually, personally, I believe this right here is kind of a glitch. But this happens every single time you open the monitor. Whenever this happens... Automatically, I go up here to monitor options, go to time span, 600 seconds. You could do something a little smaller than that, maybe a little bit bigger if you want, but I like to do 600 seconds. Press OK. Boom, we have retrieved the data for 10 whole minutes. This is the live streaming data directly from the seismic instrument itself. No middleman, not the University of Utah, not UNAVCO. Well, I mean, they were the ones who put the instrument in. But no middleman, you are the one streaming the data directly from the instrument yourself. A lot of freedom in that, guys. There's a lot of freedom in that. Now let's go to borehole 944 at West Thumb Lake. EHC for short period vertical. Press wave to monitor one more time. If it'll work. Sometimes you have to press it multiple times. There we go. Now that is going to be added here as well. There we go. We got borehole 944. Well, now let's do borehole 950 in the Norris Geyser Basin. Short period vertical. Going to highlight it only once and press wave to monitor. There we go. We got borehole 208, borehole 944, and borehole 950. Now right click two times. One, two. There's the spectrogram. Right click two times. One, two. There's the spectrogram. And then right click two times. One, two. And there's the spectrogram. That is how you live stream spectrogram data, kind of like how Spectronet used to, except he tried to scam people out of their money, so he's not on really on YouTube anymore. Um, but a lot of other people, like Kiwi Quakes International Spectros and Matthew Shipley, he does this as well. Um, oh, what's the other one? Sporky, I think it is. Sporky is also another one who streams live spectrograms on the internet. Remember, there is no such thing as spectrogram data. There's only such thing as seismic data. Construed by either a seismogram plot, a spectrogram plot, or a spectra plot. For example, right click once, not supported, that is the particle motion, of course that's not in use. Here is the seismogram plot, here is the spectra plot, and here is the spectrogram plot. Here is the seismogram plot, spectra plot, and spectrogram plot. And of course that's the same for down here as well, as you can see. There we go. So, that is how you download Seismic Audio and how you st live stream data in the Seismic Program Swarm. The monitor can hold, I'm going to say maybe 50 stations, but I suggest using two separate monitors if that's even possible. I don't know if that's possible, but usually I only do 10 stations at the max for one monitor. So, 
Jeremy, I hope this helped you. If this did not help, please email me again or give me a comment in the comment section below or just shoot me a message on Facebook. Please let me know. I really hope this helped. God bless. Have a great day, guys.